Welcome to the Calgary Sessions. I'm your host, Jeff Humphreys. This is episode number 51. Today's uh, guest, I don't know what we're going to call this one, Battle of the Curls, maybe, or... <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come up with something good. Uh, this is going to be a really cool conversation. Um, our mutual friend, Laval St. Germain, uh, hooked us up. So uh, thank you, Laval. Um, so yeah, introduce yourself, name, and kind of what you're up to right now. Hey, um, I'm Lori Beatty, and uh, I'm an author, and I'm a guide, and... Yeah, I run a company doing all of that. Cool, and <laughs> that's obviously why the why Laval kind of hooked us up because you're the the author piece. You just just released a book this year, I guess, right? Yep. Yeah. So um, uh, Calgary's Best Bike Rides came out this spring, um, but my big book that's been around for a while is Calgary's Best Walks. And yes, I run into Laval when I'm out and about walking. He's usually running and sprinting upstairs, but we do chat when he <laughs> he he always has his breath, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so this, yeah, this would be cool because I, the book, the book is really interesting to me, so we'll eventually get there, but, um, you've seen a couple of these episodes. What I like the guests to do is kind of go back, you know, this, this show is just kind of like your origin story, you know, right. where you came from, what you're interested at, at whatever young age, you're just like, yeah, this is when I start remembering, you know, what I, what I found interesting or how you grew up or where you grew up. So yeah, just right. kind of go back as far as you want to go. Okay, well, I'll, I grew up in New Brunswick in a small town on the St. John River Valley, and uh, I was bored a lot. Um, so I was being creative all the time, making things up, and I tend not to follow the rules. So um, always an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur ever since I was a little kid, and uh, selling rocks door to door, whatever it was. Um, and then... Um, Did you yeah. do it for money or because yes. you were just money and boredom? Yeah, m money and boredom, I'd create things, um, and then I'd go and sell tickets to shows, or I'd make up stuff. But basically, the, the motto in my life is be creative, make things up, don't follow the rules. And I've done it forever. I've never had a real job um, where you have an actual paycheck and, uh, you know, benefits and all those things. Um, I, you when know, did you say, when did you come up with that phrase? Uh, how, like, how young, like, because to be a creative person and be that confident that those pieces all fit together yeah. and you can make that work forever? Well, it, it basically came from my family. So my dad, uh, he was a, you know, chartered accountant, but he ran a small business and his, he was always just telling me, just walk in like you own the place and nobody will question it. If you look like you belong, you will just, you know, um, sort of make it up and move with it and say yes and see where that goes. And, and so that's been sort of how I grew up. And he would always encourage me to take that step without necessarily knowing where the step would go. Um, so I guess it just confidence, yeah. but you're kind of sweating too, right? You're not sure. Uh, risk taking and knowing that you could fail and that's okay. And so I got comfortable with that at a young age because, uh, you know, I failed a lot in those little early ventures. Uh, people slammed the doors in my faces or wouldn't answer them. Um, but did that bug you? Do you have the personality where I was like, oh, that one stung? Or can it just roll off? And you... um, I think probably I just kept going and tried something new. And that's uh, a quality that helps me do what I'm doing now because it's not all going to be a success. And I've tried many things that weren't and they were bad ideas and they just went nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are if you love what you do, it doesn't really bother you. You fine tune it a bit and uh, you don't feel offended when people say no. You just think, well, that wasn't a good idea. Because mm -hmm. if they said no, it wasn't meant to be. Yeah. Um, so don't think it's something wrong with them. It's probably something wrong with your idea. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It, it, not everything's a win. Yep. Um, so how how do you, like elementary, junior high, high school, you yeah. were just like doing doing creative things all the time? or was No, it no. I just, in a small town, you get bored enough that, you know, it, you just didn't have things to do. So you had to make things up. I was very sports minded because there's not much to do in that town. So, uh, you know, I did a lot of sports and I uh, was very active and I liked the outdoors, but you know, in New Brunswick, there's not a lot of infrastructure like out in Calgary with trails and pathways and all that. So mm -hmm. it was more like you just went outside. You didn't, weren't an outdoorsy person. Um, and, uh, when I left there, I went to university in Nova Scotia and that's when it was, um, I had to figure out what I was going to do. It was a business degree. And then what do I do with that? I'm yeah. not going to work for a corporation. I'm never going to have a job sitting in an office. That will never happen. How did you know that? Like, so Because it was so boring, the thought of it, like seriously. So coming through high school, you were very confident knowing that that path wasn't going to be for you? So um, yeah, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew when I was in business school, I wasn't like most of the people in business school. Mm. Like those people were, um, they seemed to want like, doing job interviews to practice. Uh, I yep. would go for an insurance interview and people, why do you want to work in insurance? I don't. Who does? Like, who would want to do that? But the, I knew I was not, I was too stubborn to actually play the game in the corporate world. Um, I knew I would offend people, so I had to be on my own. So hmm. there was really no option. It was always, I had to, I'm very, I guess, independent. So I had to be working on my own yep. and take the fall or take the win. But I, um, you know, I was fine with that. So I've, that's my whole life. I've just created businesses and, and then landed on the one I'm in now. And that seemed to work out. 
Um, so when you, the idea to go to business school, did you know you needed some sort of foundation to pull all this off or why'd you? That was more about getting away. Um, and, uh, just starting fresh on your own and building who you are. I mean, that's what I think university mostly is. Um, unless you're going to be very fine tuning to an engineer or a doctor or something like that. Yep. Um, I had no aspirations of what I would do. I had no idea. Even when I left business school, I drove West, I came out to Calgary, um, to sort of work with somebody for a few months on an honorarium basis. And I never left. Um, so, you know, that, that I had no, and I still didn't know what I was going to do. I was here five years and, and it just kept trying different businesses. So I just make things up. <laughs> So, so you graduated and literally just drove out west. Literally drove. Well, I went to Europe right after I graduated. You know that thing where you travel around. I came back. Uh, my mom had clipped a newspaper article about a woman out here who was in corporate fitness, and I thought corporate business fitness I like. I'll talk to her, and I went out and worked with her for a bit, and it was not at all a good fit. But it got me here, mm. and so then I stayed. Did you did you know you wanted to get out west eventually, or to Calgary specifically, or no. you just need to get out? I just need to leave town and I had yeah. no idea. And this, this article got me here. My brother, I had a brother living in Calgary, but that wasn't the reason. It was this woman and I contacted her and I just mm. drove west. And uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of a, a, just something to get me out here, but Calgary's amazing. So I stayed. <laughs> mm. um, so when you're in university, what like, are you, do you still have business ideas then? Have you launched anything in university that you were selling or flogging or what were you or are you just going to school? Well, you know, I, I did like Frosh Week. I made t-shirts and sold them because I saw that, you know, there was an opportunity to make some money there. But I, I was pretty busy. So no, I wasn't doing a lot of um, entrepreneurial stuff then, but I'm always thinking like an entrepreneur. Like I, my motto is my life's a write-off. And basically everything I do, there's a write-off that goes with it because it's always a business idea, mm -hmm. um, you know, whenever I'm doing something. Yep. Um, okay. Well, I want to get into all these different things that you've been up to. So yeah. you get to Calgary. You worked for somebody for a little bit? Very briefly, but it was not a real job. I created yep. a position for myself and yep. then it just ended six months later. And you were totally fine to then stay in Calgary and yep. keep moving. So what's the first thing that was uh, the next thing that you pulled off? I made up a company called Artistic Adventures because I got into um, improv and um, sort of a whole bunch of different artsy things. And I hired artists and playwrights like Clem Martini and uh, different people to do outdoor um, and the arts together. So we would go to an outdoor place and I had like Keith Johnstone who wrote the book Impro and created theater sports. He came out and did a theater sports weekend with me. I just made stuff up. It was not profitable, mm. but it was fun. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was just trying to find something that would be a fit, but it was, a, and you know, travel writing workshops where I'd hire people from the Herald to come out and do these, but it was more about nature and, and the arts and combining those two, but mm -hmm. that wasn't a viable business for the it, long term. Just because you knew right away or did you have to figure out after <laughs> you just it ran can't for make bit? much money off of those kind of things you put in a ton of work and then it's like very little money yeah. um so I, I, you know but that's okay if you if you love what you do you can live on very little i didn't take big vacations i mean it was an adventure every day trying to figure out what i was going to do creating things actually um drives me right like that's what i find exciting if i get depressed what am i going to create next what mm -hmm. am i going to what what am i planning that's been my life forever you know trips to the east coast i take people on folk art tours and hiking and i mean i just that was the fun part but eventually you have to make enough money to mm -hmm. like pay for things yep. right and you knew early that you wanted to do like adventure or outdoors things or like it was that was just the no. first crack at it that's just because in calgary it, the outdoors is what it is i mean the, i arrived in calgary and i was like wow this is what time of year um it was october okay i arrived the next day i went hiking up moose mountain i had like little hush puppy boots on i'd never really hiked in the mountains it was snowy i was post holing i didn't even know where i was but the woman i was going to work with had a hiking group and i went out with her and that was it i was like i'm this is wow. Like, mm. and, and just the opportunities out here and all the energy of people running and the, and you know, at lunch hour, just the whole exodus from the buildings and everybody's like that, the bar is set very high in Calgary for, um, you know, high energy people, fit people, um, creative people making things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was like, this is amazing energy. You know, I like this place. You knew right away. And the reason I'm asking is because I'm born and raised here. So this is yeah. kind of, this is what I know. Right. So my perspective is a little bit different. You just kind of, you take things for granted because right. you see them every day and yeah. that's how you grew up. Oh no, this is a very high energy city. Um, you know, it's a young city, of course, people are coming here for opportunities. Um, but it's, an, it's, um, I don't know, people are positive. Uh, they say yes more than they say no. And there's not a lot of places that are like that, especially um, where I'm from. It's, it's just more conservative, like where I grew up. Um, so I don't think I could ever be this creative there and have it this easy and have people also say, wow, you do that. That's cool. Not 
you can't do that. How do you do that? Like that doesn't make sense or no, or closing doors. Doors open here quite easily if you want them to, if you're passionate about something. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to say, um, how, not how easy it's been, but do you say that from a point where, or a spot where you're just coming up with interesting, creative ideas and you can launch them and make them happen and, and in this environment makes it, it's just easy to pull that off? Well, it's not easy to make them a success, yep. um, but it's easy for to talk about them and for people to think that makes sense that you did it. Gotcha. Um, and and um, anything's possible out here, I guess, that you, know, you don't have a lot of rules and regulations telling you not to do things or you can't do things. Mm -hmm. um, and people are good with workarounds out here. And I don't know, I just, I find that um, people just, they... They like to have ideas and make them and try them out. And if they fail, they fail and they get back up again. And it's mm -hmm. a very um, optimistic place to be. Yep. Uh, and that suits my personality because I, I don't like a lot of rules. Um, I don't like a lot of things constraining me. I just want to try things and make it up. And may I, if there's a rule, maybe, yeah, I'll follow it usually. But as long as I don't hurt somebody, I, I you know, I might find a workaround. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um so after the after the first company then where are you where are you off to then <clears throat> so that was um a quite a few years of you know just having fun but not making much money and then what i really thought is i have to do something and what i like is running a business and i like walking and that's it that's my business and i had been in fitness i used to teach fitness classes and lifestyle change programs and like what kind of classes you know, aerobics through a program at UFC called um, Trim Gym, where yep. people were doing lifestyle change programs to try and like, you know, become healthy with nutrition and all that. Yep. But I had a client base that would come to me. So I said, I'm starting a walking business called Fit. Well, I didn't even have a name for it. And they all signed up because they were nice and they supported me. And, uh, you know, then, a, I know the newspaper is always looking for stories. And I sent them, a, um, you know, some stuff, what I was doing. They said, oh, what's your company? And I made up the name Fit Frog. I like alliterations. Um, and then... <laughs> And then my one of the people that hiked with me said, hey, your slogan should be, we keep you hopping so you don't croak. And I'm like, oh, that's great. <laughs> um, now that, you know, I've kind of gotten rid of that now, but it sort of just kept going. And I did urban hiking, which had never been done because why would you stay in the city when you have the mountains? So I created these urban hikes in the, around the city and I would take people on them. And um, Anybody? Yeah. And yeah. This, so how this did was you... a business, right? Like I just made it up, right? And what year did you launch this? This was 1997. So. 25 years. The internet's like barely there. No, there's no internet. Like, like 95, 96 is dial up, wow, isn't it? Yeah, it's not. It's nothing. It's like email maybe and that's it. Yeah. So this was all paper stuff and uh, mail outs and I was, you know, mailing tons of stuff to people and it's, you know, like all that kind of thing, you know, it's. Yep. Um, but different, right? Like to launch a business back then versus today yeah. is like. Yeah. But it was more media, right? So you could, pro you could get more uh, attention through the media. So I knew how to get media because I, I got very savvy. Um, marketing is kind of my background when I went to business, that's the only thing I could see a fit was marketing and selling. Um, so I could get a lot of attention through media because they always wanted stories and I could spin the angle and, you know, the, and get that. So I did create awareness through that and I yeah. uh, would get clients because of that. And so, you know. So what did this look like? So people would call you and say, hey, I've heard about you. Like, or they saw a piece of paper somewhere that says urban walks, like run me yeah, through this. Yeah, I put posters up everywhere. So okay. posters used to be a thing, right? You know, yeah. and then uh, I would get stuff in the Calgary Herald would be the big one or on CBC. So I would, you know, I'd, I'd package it differently, whether it was urban walks or hiking training was a huge hit. I got like a hundred people signed up because of one tiny article in the Calgary Herald. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was the same thing, but it's all how you package it. Like that's marketing, right? It's like, how do you name it? How do you, how do you frame it so that you get different demographics, different people? Mm -hmm. So that's how I did it then. It was through basically basically through newspapers doing little stories yep. um, and then, you know, getting people to, um, through that. And they were just, and so you'd put together groups yep. and take them out daily, weekly, weekends only? Or Usually a few times a week in the evenings and mornings on weekends. And then um, I mixed it up with mountain things. Um, we'd go out of the city and hike uh, and then they could do a whole package and they'd sign up. And so it's all targeted at Calgarians, not tourists. Yep. And it's a very, it's like a club now, like a meetup in a sense, like nowadays we have meetups. Yep. Um, but I was curating um, the people so that you know, you knew that there was, if you liked me, if you yeah. liked my way, then you could come out and know that it would run, be run a certain way. And that's mm -hmm. always who's the leader in anything and yeah. how do they lead. And so I'm, my leadership style is very unobtrusive. I don't like to be at the front. I like to be at the back and uh, make sure things go smoothly, but not sort of be like, Hey, yeah, yeah, listen to me. Yeah. Um. So that's, that's what I did. People signed up and came out. And you hosted every single. Yes. And so how many kilometers were you put? were you putting on in oh a week? Oh my God. I don't even know. Um, yeah. I mean, I tend to walk around, 
or bike or something, you know, 10 to 15 a day, probably yeah. while well, biking would be more. But um, at that time, I don't even know if I did three times a week and they were probably seven kilometers each yeah. and yep. then the mountains too. Um, what the hell was I going to just ask you? Um, how did you find all these paths and routes and stuff? Like Made them up. I just got a map book, like, because we didn't have Google Maps at that time. You're not born here. No. So, so you're figuring this out on the fly? Yeah, right. So I would basically look at a map book and see a green space, and I would go to that spot, and I would start walking, and I would take notes, turn left, turn right, turn left, uphill, down there. And then I would walk with groups with these notes in front of me until I got to know the city. Mm -hmm. And I would follow my own direct turn right, turn left, turn right, and go back and lead them. And then I would expand on it as I became more familiar with the city until I basically had been everywhere and had you know and these are all through neighborhoods and parks and little hidden stairways and pathways and mm -hmm. viewpoints and coffee shops and you know all the the things destinations and finding all that and making it into an interesting route yep. um so yeah that's what i did it just took um a few years to sort of get that more you know so i knew it without having to look at the paper but mm -hmm. uh yeah like a few years you kind of got a lay of almost like most of the city right like you put on enough kilometers and did enough research and walked oh, everywhere yeah. that you've kind yeah. of yeah. It, I mean, it just took doing it all. It's like anything. You do it enough times and you become good at it. <laughs> do you think that's, do you think that's for everybody though? <laughs> um, you, I think you... if you're passionate enough and you put enough time into it, you know, they have that, what is it? The 10 year thing where if you do something for 10 years, become an expert. I do think if you do something long enough, you, you know, you become good at it. Um, all the time. Or do you think that some people just can't get it? Well, maybe if it's like an elite athlete, you might not. But <laughs> if you're, if it's, if it's something more athletic, or like you just don't have the build to be, you know, an NBA star, and you're yeah. trying to be bad, no, maybe not. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. For me, it seems like if I'm passionate about something and I put enough time in, um, it it goes. It goes. It goes well because people want to be around people who are excited and passionate about things. And you, you think, also put more work in, and you don't need to be paid as much because you love it. Do you think that's unique though? To be able to say that, to be passionate, to put in the work and know that, it's, that it does work out? Do, yeah. Do, do people in your world, they all like that? Or do you, do you, when you actually think about it, is it a unique? Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of determination. Um, yeah. I mean, I think some people probably want a little more um, structure and this would be a difficult path because it's very uncertain and you're making it up and um you don't know really what you're doing sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I just didn't know. I was just, I, you have to be confident enough to make things up and not have people question you and you don't know what to say. You just say, well, just what I'm doing. I mean, yeah. I'm just leading walks. People pay you to lead walks. Yeah, they do actually. Well, you go to a gym, you pay to go into a facility and use, you know, equipment like that. How different is it? But yeah, yeah I get it. Like, I mean, some people see value in things and some don't. So. Mm -hmm. um, was there anything like that in the no. late nineties that, that you were like, people were hosting this Nothing. kind of yeah no and there still isn't and yeah. and so what i do is quite unique because it's not based on nature it's not based on interpretation it's not based on history <clears throat> it's based on connecting a city and connecting people to a city and connecting people to place and so i didn't know that at the time when i started it but that's actually what it is it's about people connecting to each other mm -hmm. and and we need that more and more nowadays so now i can say it i can articulate it mm -hmm. um but that's that's really what i was doing and and so some people would be waiting for the interpretation oh, do you give me a history lesson like, yep. are we going to see you know old mm -hmm. houses it's mm -hmm. like no i'm not that person yep. there might be somebody with me who could tell you about that old house and be quite interesting but i don't need to know every everything. I'm going to just make the route and we're going to go out and we're going to talk to people and you're going to meet people and you're going to interact with your environment and see how the city comes together, um, a different neighborhood than yours and see how other people live in the city. And that's what we're going to do. And whatever you take away from it's what you need. Like, mm. I'm, I'm not going to tell you how to, you don't have to love the trees. You might love the art. Yep. Like, I don't know, like yep. it's your life. Yeah. Um, and the, and the groups of people that you, that come together, do people come by themselves? Do they come in mini groups? Like Usually and, by themselves. Yeah. And yep. what's the, do you have a cap on how many people? No, but I don't get that many people because I don't really do a lot of marketing now. Yep. It's very, um, I've kind of gone off on other projects. And yep. um, Back then, was there any? Back then, I would get a lot more people. Yep. Um, and yeah, I didn't really have a cap. It's usually, it was usually around 10 to 15 people that would yep. show up, but I had it so that people could show up at any time. So I never really knew. And I still do that. <laughs> and do you find, would people, were people having such a great experience that they would show up to multiple hikes during the year? Oh like, yeah. Or walks? Yes. Urban walks like during the year. So they wanted to follow That's how around. it worked. I had, um, you could buy a whole package for a whole season. So you could do that. So you can, mul you would you know, come multiple times. Uh, yeah, I've had, I still have clients who have been hiking with me for 23 years. So, mm. um, and 
then I have people that just drop in once in a while. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, I'm, it's kind of like, I'm not trying to build that business now. I mean, it's just something I do because I like people and I like getting out, but, um, I, you know, nowadays it's a little different. There's a lot more meetups and there's a lot of ways to meet people on trails and, Mm -hmm. and get together. And as long as you find a great leader, then, you know, it's a good fit. Well, and things probably change like digital when oh yeah cell phones and GPSs and all these things kind of start yes. coming out and probably it changed the game a little bit for you. Yeah. You mean for how I create things or how things work? Yeah. Do you see them just how, you know, people can then access more on their own? Yeah. You know, they could, yeah. they, could have, they, they could be a little more courageous. They could go out and kind of know they're not going to get totally lost because totally. they have this map in their mm-hmm. pocket. Yeah. But it, you know, a lot of people aren't comfortable with maps, which yeah. is the issue. So they need a little bit of uh, insight first. So sometimes people come out, they get a lay of lay of the land and then they can take, go back on their own. They yep. just, you know, even though the maps that I do uh, are, you know, if it's say it's my books, it's quite clear. It's still, some people aren't really comfortable with maps. Um, so yeah, it just depends. And some people want to just meet people, mm-hmm. you know, they, they mm-hmm. it's about interact, especially during COVID. I mean, that, that was a time where we could only be outdoors. So that was yeah. a great way to connect with people um, in a place that was allowed. Yeah. So um, and you just touched on the book piece. Mm-hmm. You've written multiple like urban hike books. Mm-hmm. What, what's the, mm-hmm. What does that kind of lineup look like? Yeah. So in 2002, my first book came out and I had a publisher in Calgary and that, um, you know, I proposed that after I'd researched so many walks for my company, I thought I should write a guidebook. I had no idea what I was doing. Again, I've never done anything like that. Um, it'd be the last thing I would have ever thought I would do. Uh, but I, I found a publisher uh, in Calgary and, and the local publishers are kind of gone now. So that's, that's a tougher thing to do, but, um, we published it and it was an incredible hit because, uh, it had never been done and nobody thought of ever walking in Calgary. And the angle I took was not nature. It was about, um, all the reasons to go out and walk, whether it's to get, for, go to the coffee, um, you know, it's to get the big views, it's to see the river, it's to, you know, go to the playgrounds, it's whatever it is in an urban environment. Mm-hmm. I touched on it and it's, it was quite a unique thing. So it, it went crazy, sold 20,000 copies. Like they, they expected a few thousand, well, right? Is that Maybe. what you expected too? Well, oh, I didn't en- have any expectations. I never did this before. It just before. felt right to pull this off? Oh yeah. But, I, I like, knew it would be a good book. I just didn't know what I was doing. Okay. Right? <laughs> so I don't know if it was good in a sense. Cause I mean, the first manuscript, you know, the first manuscript I did came back mostly red ink of complete like it was just disaster. My writing was terrible. Um, you know, and I had to completely rewrite almost everything. So this is not something I was in, you know, good at mm-hmm. right away. It's just that the concept was good. Yep. Um, but how I did it and how I wrote was not good. So I had to really work on that. Mm-hmm. So 20,000 copies. Yeah. Blows your mind. Yeah. Like, um, over how, how long does it take to sell 20,000 copies? Yeah. So that was, um, so most of them sold probably in the first five to seven years. And then after that, it's a trickle after, you know, mm-hmm. cause the way books work is that an older edition, it's sort of, well, a guidebook of course can become obsolete, but, yep. um, it also, um, it just doesn't get placed as well. Like, it, you know, once it's older then mm-hmm. you know, the Indigos don't put it out front and center as much, but yep. Indigo did push it very hard, which helps a lot because they, they have a lot of stores and they can push a lot of books. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, probably 10 years, but then I, you know, I had kids and then that kind of, it shuts down um, a lot of stuff because you have to be available. But then as they became older, then in 2015, I, I d- redid the book. Okay. And at that time, um, publishing had changed a lot and there weren't many local publishers. So I decided I knew enough of the parts that I was going to do it myself um, and take on the whole thing and hire all the different people in the distribution and all the things that go along behind mm-hmm. the scenes that's really boring but is critical yeah. um, to get a book in stores and to make it professional looking. Um, I did it myself. And that that launched, that came out in 2015. The first, the first edition of my whole, whole new look. Um, new look with old, like new maps, Completely old maps, new. all, everything's brand new. Completely brand new, um, full color this time. And, uh, I put a lot of energy in the maps simply because I think maps visually, I like visual, not just words on mm-hmm. a page. So I don't like turn left, turn right, turn left. Um, so yeah, that's where I put the time and paid the, the, the designer, I yep. had a good graphic designer, um, to do that. And then, um. Yeah, they sold incredibly well again. So I did another edition in 2020, which was like, okay, COVID for walking. It's like I hit the jackpot. It's like, how do you get people to walk? (laughs) Shut down the world. That's the only way because they're never going to walk otherwise because Mm -hmm. walking is slow and it's just not part of our lifestyle anymore. But then it was. And my book came out at Christmas during COVID and it was like hitting the jackpot. It's like, you know, after 25 years, it was like, I did it. <laughs> I got it right. And so that was like the best timing of anything you I've ever have... done. But you can't plan that. No. You can't plan COVID. I no. mean, I actually was ready. The book was 
pretty much done in the spring and then COVID hit and it was like, oh my God, this is like actually going to work. So you <laughs> so, sat it, so you sat on it till Christmas or did you? No, I, I mean, it was, I was already working on it and then the, it, and then I, you have to pick your time. So I wanted it to come out at a, either the spring or Christmas. Gotcha. And I'd never done a Christmas publication. It's always yep. the spring because walking is, a, you know, these things people buy in the spring, but Christmas was like amazing timing, especially during COVID because people really needed something mm. to to think about doing and to do with their families and to yeah. give us gifts and all that. So yeah, that, that they could actually, that was accessible during the, yeah. in the middle of all the exactly. chaos. Um, when you want it, when you decide to like self, is it called self-publishing? It is. I, they consider it self-publishing. There's many different ways of self-publishing. I mm -hmm. can get into the boring details, but yeah, it is self-publishing. When you decided to go that way, were you confident that your first experience with the first book that you could kind of see all the pieces and how they went together and you could mm -hmm. pull it off? Or did you, yeah. have, did you meet people in that first book that you could leverage? for the second one? Not, not really. I, uh, I wouldn't have done it if I hadn't found an amazing graphic designer. And that was a complete fluke, like Where'd my entire him? life. His name is Sergio, um, Gaetan, and okay. he's actually, uh, originally from Mexico, was living in Calgary, uh, and just a complete fluke like my life, but really. But did you, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> when you say that though, a complete fluke. Yeah. Um, I, I want you to explain that. You, yeah. You get put into situations that aren't planned, that everything fits at the right time, the yes. right place. Yes. So besides saying it's just being lucky and you have fluke, to see the opportunity it? and grab it. You can't like a lot of people, things happen to them and they don't grab hold of the opportunity they see in front of them. They don't take that leap. Um, and I wasn't going to do the book until I found the right person. And, uh, I found this person through a completely circuitous route that I took a wilderness first aid class. His wife was actually in the class with me. I had to drive her to, you know, the mountains. And through that, she said, my husband's a graphic designer. Long story short, he became my graphic designer. But it's not like I was mm. that day thinking no. I need to find one. It's just yeah. like, this is it. This is it. Yeah. I just got to do it. So he put together a proposal and it was like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. Yeah. And that we just dove in. Um, but what is that though? What like, mean. like you were, you were, you're in a wilderness course with, with, yeah, which fits who you are. Yeah. And then, you, you know, there's probably like-minded people there. So mm -hmm. you put yourself in a situation where this, yes. you're not thinking about these things happening. No. But when they do happen, they make a lot of sense. You talk about what you want to do all the time. And then somebody might be there that will go, hey, it's like with my first book, I was sitting in the Lazy Loaf and Kettle in 2000, I don't know, no, 2000s. Uh, I'd just been on the J Douglas Fir Trail, came in, ran into, ran into a woman I knew who worked at the Calgary Herald. And uh, I said, geez, you know, I was kind of thinking about writing a book on walking. She goes, I just got contacted by a publisher in Calgary to write a book on walking in Calgary, but I don't think I'm qualified. You should talk to them. They became my publisher. No way. But that's because I was having a cinnamon bun and lazy loaf and I just mm -hmm. talked about what I want to do. So basically I talk about what I want to do all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to do it, by putting it out there, it kind of makes you almost commit to it a little bit more and take that chance because you're like, I told people, I told people, okay, now I'm going to do it. But, yeah. um, and it doesn't always work out, but that's, that's how everything has worked out for me. And, and it's, it's, it's got to feel comfortable to be able to say that and to be able to live like that because I th I feel like, and I, I kind of operate the, the same mm -hmm. way and it, you know, you look around at, at peers and whoever else and they're just, everything's very structured and, you know, kind of very linear and, you know, there's a process and there's a ladder to climb. There's all these things. And yeah. for the longest time that didn't feel right for me and you're looking at it and you're like, what? do I really have to go down that path? Yeah. And, oh no, and you I, don't. I don't. But it's interesting that like you're you're so accepting of it now. Yes. And it just how long how long have you felt like that? Like early, early, or is this? Do you need a couple wins on the board to kind of feel it and say that out yeah, loud? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there were times when I was like really not feeling great about what I was doing. When you know you you make pennies on this thing you've worked so hard on, and it's yep. like, oh my god, when will I ever have success? But then, but then you keep trying and you keep talking to people and you have a success and. um I guess I, I've never been about making a lot of money, but I do want to do something that I enjoy. And mm -hmm. so I don't need big vacations that are, you know, the $10,000 a week fly away because I love what I'm doing now. Yep. And so that kind of feeds me and it's a balanced life. I want a balanced life. And um, I just don't deviate from it. You know, I just, uh, I think I'm too stubborn. And so I don't know. I think grit gets you a long ways in life. Mm. You know, it's not the smartest. It's, it's the ones that just don't give up. <laughs> So I, I don't give up. I'm very persistent and, uh, I, I commit to what I love and, you know, I guess that's why I'm where I am. <laughs> Do you, in your, your circle of friends, 
is there is there a bunch of you that kind of operate in the same way or are you kind of a wild card? Yeah, I guess I'm I'm a bit unique. I don't but I mean there's lots of me out there, I'm sure. It's just that I don't necessarily know those mm-hmm. all those people. Mm-hmm. I meet people through so many different things that um I guess really the type of people I like are people that say yes instead of no and are sort of looking for the positive in life. And, you know, we, we all have bad things happening, but the ones I tend to, to gravitate to are kind of, I guess, optimists a little bit more than the negative people. And uh, mm-hmm. they're looking looking for having a laugh and, you know, like that kind of lighter person. But And, and some of them are, super, are creative too, but in different ways. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of a little bit unique. How do you... Um the conversation with your kids? Yeah. How, how does it, as a super creative person that, you know, lives by fluke, yeah. <laughs> which is yeah, like, yeah. how do you, how, what do those converse, conversations look like with your kids? Like, do you, uh, can you actually guide somebody on this kind of path or is it? Well, you guide through what you do. I yep. mean, anything that you want your kids to do, you have to do it yourself. You can't tell them to go ride a bike if you don't ride a bike. Like, get on your bike. That you show them. Um, so I've basically, my goal in, in having kids grow up is that for them to be independent, for them to do what they want to do, not be a mini me, and but but to live actively, live um, balanced, and, uh, you know, to find what they love and to pursue it and not to worry about, you know, if I'm what it's going to be exactly. You don't know exactly because you don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know who's going to influence you. You don't know what opportunity is going to cross your path. And you're going to think, God, that is so interesting. I am going to do that. But you have to be open to it. Mm-hmm. And you can't be so tunnel vision that you can't see that when it hits you. So I guess I encourage them to be like that by just being like that myself. I don't yeah. tell them. There's never a telling of, yeah. like, they don't, my, my husband and I are the same way. I mean, we just try to share values and then mm. let them figure it out. And it's basically how they're living their life. They're very creative as well mm. in the sense of how they see the world. And, uh, and so I think that's a success and, and they want, and they have independence, which I think is a success too. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. I just find it fascinating that, <clears throat> that you're willing just to, you know, when you're, when you're talking about saying things out loud in certain mm-hmm. situations, I think that's, it's such a, it does. It kind of forces your hand to actually make it legit. The first time I said this idea out loud mm-hmm. was a month after I started my business. Yeah. And I told this girl, Manny, I'm like, I'm going to start a podcast. That's it. And and it took me like a year, it took 15 months to kind of pull it off, do yeah. the branding and all that stuff. But yeah. The, so once I works. said it, I was like... Then you put the wheels in motion. Somebody's heard you say it and, and then they may ask you about it later. So did you start that? And And some things I said I was going to do. And I think, nah, it was a bad idea. Yep. But the other ones, and I keep working, I keep working it and then it happens. And I know that now. So if I really want to do something, I keep saying it out loud because I'm like, that will make me start working on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, I agree. Um, so this, the book in 2020 gets launched, goes off, everything's awesome. Yes. And then where are you up? Then what are you up to? <laughs> then I thought I have to do something else because that's done. Um, <laughs> you were done with the walking idea? No, I just, I published it. So now okay. it's, on, it's out there in the world. And and yep. so the publishing and then the marketing is the insane amount of work. And then. What'd you do? What'd you do for the marketing of it? Because this is, and the reason I'm asking is because <clears> in 97 or when you were marketing with posters and yeah. getting articles. And so how'd you, what was your marketing brain doing in 2020? Right. So I, I have a segment on CTV and I've been doing that for five years. And so I create content for them and then push it out and uh, as author and guide. And um, they, so that gives awareness. So what does this look like? Run me through um, this? Run, so, run me through the segment idea? So well, I, I create contact of video on my phone and then I do like, um, you know, fall walks or fall hikes or best bike rides north or whatever I'm going to do. And they it's slot all you in like the whatever show and it's just you show it's, up on the TV? Uh, CTV morning live and I usually do a segment um, every other week okay. and uh, it'll be, you know, a three minute segment and I create content for them and it's all just, they just, I just talk to it and it rolls. Yeah, cool. So basically that, I've been doing that for five years and so that's how'd, some awareness building there. How'd you get that one? Um, I just... Well, they initially asked me in 2015 if I would do it um, because they had had me in and interviewed me and then they asked me and then we just kept it going. Um, So I just keep creating content and uh, making it go. Um, You know, if you want media, you make it easy for them and and it happens. So if you want awareness and just be easy to work with and do a good job. And so that's what I do. Um, Yeah. So the other media stuff, you know, it's, um, you know, CBC and, you know, I I push everything out to all the media. Like, so I'm, I'm sending out. I, I, 
I used to have a book publicist and they retired. And yep. so now it's all up to me. So it, it does become a little bit harder if you're into working on your own. Like I like to have a team, yep. but it's hard to find in the book industry sometimes to have mm -hmm. a team. Uh, there's just not a lot of people that do it or work with independents. They might work with publishing houses, but not necessarily an independent. Yep. But since I'm regional local, it's quite easy to, to flood the market. You know, it's, it's not a big market. I'm not dealing nationally. I'm mm -hmm. dealing locally so I can really flood it. So you're, you're then taking your idea pushing it, getting it in front of all the different media outlets mm -hmm. and then some of them pick them up. So yeah. some, that's your main kind of way to get the word out there? Yeah. And um, you know, I work with the libraries. So I do free walks with the libraries because they do a great job at pushing out to a whole, a massive demographic. Mm -hmm. um, in 2000, oh, what year was it that we had the 100th anniversary of Canada? I partnered with the library and the Center for Newcomers and we did uh, walks in many languages. So I would have, uh, you know, in... Um, Translate interpreters coming out what might be Tagalog or Arabic or whatever. And I would market it through the libraries as that to them be more welcoming to people. And then I donated a bunch of books and gave them out as part of that, the 150 and, and Calgary Foundation had a grant yeah. for that. So that was also marketing too. It's always marketing. So you try to make sure that, um, you know, that people can see an image of what you're, so if it's a book, they see it because mm -hmm. people need to see things many, many times before they ever especially nowadays, there's so much clutter out there. There's just so much, many distractions. So mm -hmm. I'm very hardcore on that um, just because I understand the value of an image and people seeing things. And so yeah. behind the scenes, there's always a method to what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the book, the book comes out and you're like, I got I to do something else. So yeah. then where'd you go? Um, then I decided, do I want to write the bike book? Because, uh, bike, uh, so I, I, I did, um, but that, that was torturous sort of, um, it was hard and the creation of the maps is, it was like map torture. I called it last year. Cause, it's like, cause they're, cause you're covering more ground on a bike. So yeah. the map's got to be bigger. Yeah. They're and then bigger. Get them into that little format. They're bigger. And then, um, so yeah, so you're, you're looking at, you know, could be 15 to 30 K for a route, which is yeah. covering bigger terrain. So you can't have as much detail on your maps and yeah. my maps are very detailed in the book, but to dealing with a designer and as I'm putting it all in Google earth and pulling, you know, the KMLs into Google maps. And then I'm, this is the boring stuff, but it's, it's the detail on the maps that I have to give him instructions to do, which just about killed me because it, there's hundreds of waypoints of saying, add this route or add this street, don't add this, add this path. Um, it's, it's the boring stuff, but it's, it's the hard stuff. And, uh, so this was, was a hard one. It was a lot harder than the walking ones. Yeah. Well, I just, I'd done it before. So I was kind of tired of doing that and I, but I wanted to create it. So was biking it was, always, sorry, was biking always a, like side by side, you were like either walking, <laughs> hiking or riding like. Right. Yeah. So always. it's always active living. So I, I use the bike as a way to get around and not necessarily leisure mm -hmm. as much. So yeah, whatever tool I can use to be active in the outdoors, I try to use it. So walking and biking um, always happening. Just biking was a harder sell until e-bikes came out. So I, you know, to produce a book and to put the money into that, uh, without e-bikes, e you just probably couldn't sell enough copies, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so now with e-bikes, I thought this is the time and especially COVID people became aware of the trail system. Mm -hmm. So then you had a, more people that understood the value of, you know, our 1300 yep. kilometers of network of paths and, you know, cycle tracks. So, yeah. Did you, um, when, since like COVID was around, did you then get this idea out there quickly? Did you kind yes. of expedite it to get the I would have got one? it out the year before if my walks book didn't need to be redone because I sold out of copies and I thought I have to do this or it dies. Mm. And so I had to redo it. And that that would have been the time I would have done the bike book. I started researching the bike book at the same time, but it came out a year later. So it came out this year. Uh, in a perfect world, it would have come out a year before, but I just couldn't pull off the two books at the same time. Yep. Um, so yeah, but it still still was pretty good timing um, because people were still keen. Um, probably would have sold a bit more a year before because there was less to do. So yep. people would have probably bought it. But you know, you can't, you can only do so much. Yeah. You only have so much time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I write a shit ton. Yeah. And I haven't got your book, but give me an example of um, like a route that you've that you've done close to like our, our place from like Sandy beach. So you have multiple oh, yeah. routes that would go from Sandy beach or how would yeah. you, and yeah, different so, lengths or how does it look? Yeah. So it's, um, 
I'll have a, a big map and sometimes there's a couple of route options on it. So that the elbow river pathway, like Sandy beach, I'd have a start there. Yeah. Um, and it would follow all the way down to Inglewood and there'd be options to cut off for people who might want, you know, a kid's route that's shorter, you know, yeah. there's a couple of different bridges there that you can take. And so I will have that all mapped out the mm -hmm. options of distances. And then there'll be options to go up over, like say Scotsman's Hill, get, grab the views and then drop back down to the elbow river pathway and then, yeah. and circuit back. Of course, they all connect to each other. So they're interconnected. Um, and, and there is no, you know, I had to just decide on some routes, but there's many options, mm -hmm. but you have to pick some yep. and just go with it. And that was the hardest part. It's like, how do you pick? Well, you just have to. Yeah. Um, and planting the seed that you can go out and bike through Calgary and do more than just be um, on, on your bike for leisure was really the bigger picture of mm. this book. And once you realize that the infrastructure is good, then you'll start to add your own to yep. it. Um, you know, because Sandy Beach, you could go down to the, uh, you know, uh, East Village and you could come back by the library and along yep. the cycle tracks on 12th and up, yep. you know, 2nd and all. So there's lots of options. You go to Fish Creek. You could go to Fish Creek. And so, yeah, I have, the, you know, tour to South Calgary, tour to North Calgary, circumnavigation, Mattamy Greenway. Um, but I also cool. have a lot of little ones that take you through, you know, it might be Aspen and all the trails up around there that are a little different that you mm. might not know. Um, but with destinations along the way too, like yep. in, in your area where you live, I mean, and Killarney and all that, there's lots of great shops. There's lots of great spots along 17th mm -hmm. to stop and grab, you know, um, I don't know shawarma and mm -hmm. you know hummus mm -hmm. and go to shag and happy grocery and like all those so i try to add all those little finds and then plant the seed to look for those things because they do exist all over the city yep. you just have to start to get out there and, and to do it on your bike it's kind of fun for sure the, um do you ever track how much time like how much research would it have taken you on your bike to put this book together yeah, I mean, it's it's like, over it the years. years. Yeah. And, and are, you, are, you, are you like cataloging these as you go? You're like, I'm going to do this one day. So you just go explore and then you just kind of write it all down, put it away and just kind of keep building this thing. It's years of of research that I understand the city and I can, in my my mental map, I can start to map out things, but that's years of research and under, mm -hmm. and knowing the city. And then I lay out the entire pathway map and I start to then, you know, highlight routes because I visually, I need to see how my coverage is. Um, but I'm, I mentally can say, okay, I'm going to go, you know, Nose Hill to Nose Creek to, you know, West Nose Creek to Hidden Valley to Edgemont. And I, I, I just know, mm -hmm. but then I might, there might be a place where I'm not sure how it is connected. And I'll think, well, I have to go to Royal Oak and come down through Tuscany and see how that all works. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a lot of times it has to be a passion. Yeah. Like you're not doing, if it's not a passion, this is not viable. It's, it's, you're never, it's not a business. It's not, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So but it fits yeah. with your lifestyle. If it has my, I have a lifestyle business. That's yeah. what I have. It's, it's all about me being able to live the way I want and sort of make it work as a business a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's not like a business business, like a Calgary downtown business. <laughs> like obviously it isn't. Um, but, but that's okay. I've never wanted that. I, I just want to love what I do and I want to be active and I want to be out there and I want to meet people and be excited about a new project and make it happen. And you know, hopefully make a little bit of money, but you know, for most people it is a little bit of money, you know, mm -hmm. it's, but that's okay. I don't need a lot. You know, yep. I'm not living like a crazy life. So yeah, there's no private jets to some <laughs> There's islands. no private jet now <laughs> for yet. Maybe the next book. A few more books. <laughs> um, so uh, when you launched the bike book, did it go good? Everything went, everything went well. And it went really well. Yep. Um, I have, yeah, a good relationship with all the bookstores and some of the bike shops like Bo Cycle carries it. They do, they're great. Um, and some of the e-bike companies and yeah, so it was, it was really great. And, uh, you know, the media got on board because, you know, they love something local that promotes, uh, people getting out and exploring their city and seeing new things. So yep. yeah, went really well. And then, so after that, so you got two good books that are out there and then yeah. what are you, where's your head at then? Like, are you... Are you always looking for what's next or can you actually sit there and enjoy it for a little bit and be content or is it <laughs> you just never you're, sit there you're moving forward? You, I, I mean, a creative person, the, the problem is, and, and when you're self-employed, um, when your project finishes, you have to create the next one. Nobody's building, nobody's saying, okay, work on this. It's mm -hmm. like, what am I doing? And so I'm, I'm not incredibly good at sitting and doing nothing. Um, I am always, but then if I get into that space, that's when I have my good ideas, when I'm getting a little bit bored yeah. and I'm like, what am I going to do? What do you do? Do you, do you, I go walk. That, that's your that's your move. <laughs> that's when I can really think. I have a dog too, so that helps. But what kind of dog? Even, um, it's a it's a labradoodle that's all lab. Okay. It has, looks nothing like a doodle, hmm. and yeah, it's very high energy. And yep. even before the dog, though, I would walk um, to think because you know it's just much better than sitting in a room. I mean, you see so much more, and yep. uh, it, it sort of helps my creativity. Can you remember? 
can you remember all the thoughts when you're out there walking or do you actually like uh write something down as you're if you're you know if you're walking no. like seven kilometers and you're six yeah. in you just have, and by the time you get home you can remember what's happening at six kilometers yeah i mean i think you work through things more than you know sort of have plan the strategy idea. yeah you might be like had an idea at home and then when you're walking you kind of work through and you go actually no or whatever or oh that's the problem um i'm not necessarily getting a step plan of what i'm going to do but yeah. i um and if i well you know if i am trying to come up with something specific then i will actually do a little talking to my phone and, t and say or type it in like mm -hmm. this is you know the basically you yeah, know yeah. here's what you're looking for yeah like that's the one i got it yeah, you know yeah. so like the subtitle for my book i worked on forever and that was and finally when i got it yes i'm like that's it and then you're recorded. walking yeah i was walking mm -hmm. it took forever for some reason i don't know why <laughs> it's ridiculous <laughs> um so now what where where are you at the Every, all the, the two books are out. Yeah. So are you just walking or what are you doing? Yeah, I just walk around. <laughs> People offer me rides. Do you need a ride somewhere? I have been offered rides in Mount Royal. Like, eventually, like do you need, I have a car. I just like walking. Um, so I, I know I will have to update them if I want them to stay relevant. So that will happen, I think, uh, in a few years. So I, I plan that into my yep. schedule. Um, and then I don't know if I'll is do it, another book. Is it When you say update, is it adding more routes or is it... You know, if uh, a sub a sub development goes our top of a path, you got to like tweak things, or how's it? It's new roots, and it's a whole new edition, and it's a whole new ISBN, which is a critical piece, um, which is boring book talk. But is that the number, like, yeah, that? yeah. So why that it makes a difference is that if bookstores, if it's a, considered a new book, like it's a yep. new ISBN, then it gets picked up in big quantities. If it's right. an old ISBN that's just been revised, it's it's not getting picked up. And as better much. placement too, if it's a new a new ISBN, Always. yeah. Like in that, they'll put you the, on like an end cap or something or whatever. Yeah, well, that's that's the indigo stuff. I mean, when you're talking smaller bookstores, they'll give you placement no matter what, mm. um, but they don't have as many stores. When you're talking the bigger business like Indigo, yeah. which I am because they sell thousands, um, you know, that's there's the strategy behind it is that it has to be a new book to get placement. They 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 have a they only carry older books for so long, or yep. they'll only carry so many a few copies of an older book. New one, then they just they can do a big splash. So you'll do all new routes? Nope. <laughs> that would be insane. That'd be crazy. No, I will add some and mm. I will update and uh, probably add some new images because there's cool. a lot of images in my books. Um, and Colors? Yeah, all color. It's full color. Um, yep. There's original art. I have artists that are involved, um, photographers. I do a lot of photography, uh, tons of photos, tons of images because I, I it's not just functional. It's It's got to be beautiful. Like mm. if I, I'm not doing it because that's what walking in Calgary has to be. It has to be a beautiful experience. Otherwise, why would you go out? Like yep. that's what I, I, I make the book to mimic what the experience you'll get. And mm. so tip, typically guidebooks are functional, but not beautiful. So yep. that's why I cross over into that. And uh, so people will buy it as a gift because they want people to feel like, wow, look what you can see in Calgary. And that's, that's the... That's the enthusiasm coming through, and that's kind of how I sell everything I do is um, through enthusiasm and passion. And you I, can't you can't fake it. No, because I actually do like it. It's actually <laughs> what I do. I had to make a business out of walking because I do it all the time and biking. Mm -hmm. Like it's just what I do. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's kind of on your radar. You mm -hmm. see, you see the re the um, revisions coming in the next some few years. point, three or four years. But yep. I have to plan it in because it takes time. Yeah. Yep. Is there anything else that's bubbling up right now? I don't now? know if I want to do another book because, you know, you always could do more books. Um, but I don't think I want this to become a much bigger business. So, yep. yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Um, you know, the, my kids just started, both of them now are in university. So that's a whole nother stage that you have to then, okay, now we have more time, less laundry, more time. Mm. Uh, <laughs> where What am I going to do with all that time? But that's exciting because yep. that's when you can get creative. Mm. So I haven't quite decided what that will look like yet. Are you, would you rather just kind of, um, would you ever partner with people? Do you ever get approached to like, whatever, joint venture something or kind of, do people come to you, pitch you an idea? They'd like to leverage yeah, your I, skill set or your personality? Yeah. Um, it's more that they, they want to talk to me about how to do what I'm doing. And then I share that and then they go off and do it rather than us partner together. Like I could have published some people's books if. Right. I went that path, but yep. instead I share with them how to do it. And if they're the right personality, they go do it. Gotcha. Um, so I get asked uh, quite often to share that knowledge, but I don't really want to take that on myself. I don't want to become the person who, who, who takes over their project. Yep. Um, so I don't partner a ton unless it's um, like, you know, in producing something, we work together, they have their specialty, I have mine. Yep. Um, but I, I, I would, I just... Uh, 
I'm just always off on my own stuff. I think, I don't know. I'm kind of out there. I'm not, I don't really fit anywhere, but that's okay. I don't, I don't necessarily want to because then it gets to. too boring. I don't want group think, you know, I want, I want to be me thinking about how I see the world. <laughs> Which I just find it fascinating that you can say that with so much confidence because it, it gives, um, it gives someone like me a lot of confidence knowing that if I feel these things, that it's the right thing. You oh know, yeah. Like it, 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 just because it doesn't fit the program for everybody else doesn't mean that it's a bad idea. That's that's the most interesting stuff is the stuff that came out of nowhere that didn't fit. You know, like, I mean, if you follow the rules all the time, it's kind of boring. You got to yeah. think outside the box, you know, and that's life. I mean, you got to, that's what I, I mean, if you think about what I still in the kids, it's like, think outside the box. Like, don't, don't, there's no rule necessarily. You, you know, you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. I don't know. It's just, yeah. you know, be creative, make things up. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's a good path. It's a good program. <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, like we talked about before, um, the way the way I like to end this show is I usually ask one question. Mm -hmm. And the question is, when I say Calgary, where's your head go? So I'll be very curious to, your head can go all, all over this damn all city. All over the place. Um, yeah. So, I mean, big nature, um, big skies, blue skies, fresh air, high energy, um, opportunity, optimism, uh, creativity, uh, yeah, I think that's that's Calgary to me. Um, risk taking, Mavericks. <laughs> um, yeah, upbeat. Um, yeah, that that's Calgary. Yeah. Could you have if you you know if you back all this up if you lived in I don't know Edmonton, could you have pulled this off? I, I think the topography would be a little more challenging um, because I have gone up there to research. I was asked to do a book about Edmonton walks. Um, Calgary is blessed with amazing topography for walking. We have all the different river valleys, ravines, just the geology of the area makes it interesting because what makes a great walk is having rolling topography and getting up to views and getting mm. down into river valleys and walking along rivers. Whereas Edmonton has a beautiful river valley. Yep. Fantastic. It has a plateau at the top. It's just a bit further east that it doesn't have those, the sort of the foothill type stuff starting up and mm. the river valleys and so I think it would have been challenging for that reason. Yep. Um, it would have been more of a nature focus and and I like the more of connecting communities and yep. all that. Hmm. So I, you know, if I was in a different place, I would have taken a done. different path. Yeah. It would have just been different. It would have been a different life. I think this is Calgary's, what I've done is very specific to what Calgary offers. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. I obviously have to go buy the biking book because I want to, because I'm, I'm like a crazy creature of habit. I have like, three loops that I do. Yeah. 30, well, that's most people. 50 or 70. But I yeah. think, but I think I'd be very curious to see from somebody else's perspective. Yeah. What's actually available from mm -hmm. our hood mm -hmm. around the city. So I think. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And most people do what they know and that's, that's fine too. Cause sometimes you just want to tune out and just do what you know and go hard. Um, but some days you want a little something different or you have somebody yeah. in town and you think I need to go in a different area and discover something new or there's a coffee shop up North. I want to check out, you know, I'm going to yeah. go there today in Beaumont park or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's cool. Um, thanks for taking the time. No problem. It was fun. Yeah, it's really cool to. Uh, it's really cool for me to hear your how you move. You know what decisions you make because that's like I said, that's interesting for me just yeah. as a business owner. And the bike thing is obviously near and dear to me, so it's gonna be cool yeah. to check that out. So that's great. Yeah. So thanks again for taking the time. Oh, it was fun. Thanks so much. Awesome.